8. Leah Farley A glamorous young British woman named Leah Farley was the ringleader of a gang of criminals who tricked unsuspecting consumers into forking over money for electronics and rental properties online. The group also worked together to convince people to receive the cash on Leah's behalf, claiming that it was part of a plan to help her obtain benefits for her children. The phony sellers failed to deliver on the promised goods and services, and instead, they pocketed the money and used it to live lavishly. Meanwhile, the home seekers who paid the deposits on properties that weren't really for rent were left, in some cases, desperate for housing on extremely short notice. Leah lived it up to the fullest extent possible, spending her ill-gotten funds on luxurious trips and outings, as well as designer duds, until the authorities caught on to her scam in 2015. She was convicted two years later of conning her victims out of 17,500 pounds, which is equivalent to about 21,577 US dollars. Just days before Leah was scheduled to be sentenced, she went on the run and spent the next several years hiding out in Turkey. But during her absence, a court sentenced her to 44 months behind bars. Leah was finally captured in early 2020, when she returned to the UK on her own accord. She was taken into custody at Birmingham Airport and was then transported to prison to serve out her sentence. 7. Jimmy Sabatino Career con man James Jimmy Sabatino's crimes date back decades to the tender age of 18. In 1999, he managed to get his hands on 262 Super Bowl tickets for free and sold them for nearly $236,000. Then, after serving two years in prison for the scam, he threw himself a $55,000 party in Times Square to celebrate his release. He was arrested for failing to pay the bill and fled to London while out on bail, during which time he landed himself in prison for pretending to be a movie executive to get free hotel rooms. And while he was behind bars, he called the FBI and threatened to kill then-President Bill Clinton. Sabatino had already served 15 years behind bars for scamming hotels throughout the United States and the United Kingdom and for running a multi-million dollar phone scam from his prison cell when he embarked on a three-month crime spree in 2013. Just weeks after being released from federal prison, he racked up nearly $600,000 in unpaid bills at luxury hotels in Miami, where he bypassed the normal process of paying upon arrival by posing as a big-time record label executive. He claimed that he'd helped launch the careers of major artists, including Puff Daddy, The Notorious B.I.G., and Method Man. And apparently, hotel employees weren't the only people who fell for it. Judging by the entourage of young, beautiful women he was often seen coming and going with, Sabatino allegedly treated his lady friends to expensive jewelry and other gifts while guzzling down six figures worth of champagne and booze with his crew, and then splitting without paying the bill. He showed photos of famous people to his groupies, and apparently convinced them that he was connected simply by acting like he knew the celebrities. And while serving a five-year sentence for the Miami crime spree, Sabatino used a smuggled cell phone to call jewelry companies, pretending to be the representative of big-name celebrities like Jennifer Lopez and Justin Timberlake. He successfully persuaded the companies to send over $10 million worth of jewelry to his associates on the outside. The majority of this jewelry was never found, and he's presently incarcerated with a 20-year sentence at Colorado's Supermax Federal Prison. 6. Coco Berthman 29-year-old Coco Berthman of South Jordan, Utah, made a name for herself as a human rights and anti-trafficking advocate. But her admirable image quickly fell apart in early 2022, when her roommate went to the police claiming that she was faking a stage 3 cancer diagnosis. Although she was never really sick, she started a crowdfunding campaign seeking to collect $100,000 in donations for medical bills. 
According to charging documents, Berthman has a traceable history of telling lies, which include a previous cancer diagnosis and other health problems that she miraculously recovered from. She even claimed that her mother was sending hitmen after her and that her family trafficked her for 15 years when she was growing up in Germany. In her latest alleged cancer con, she told people that she'd been treated at a clinic that she was never a patient at and that she was seeking alternative treatments at other centers that apparently had no record of her getting in touch. Police reportedly interviewed another doctor who said that he was treating the woman for post-traumatic stress disorder rather than cancer. And by the time authorities charged Berthman with felony communications fraud, the phony fundraiser had garnered nearly $10,000 in donations. She pleaded guilty to a reduced misdemeanor charge of wrongful appropriation, which means that she admitted to obtaining unauthorized control of another person's property. Berthman managed to avoid prison time and will avoid a conviction as long as she follows certain rules set forth by the court, including a requirement to pay $900 monthly until she repays the full amount of the donations she fraudulently obtained. Her reputation, though, will likely never recover, and people are still trying to figure out which bits and pieces of her life story are true and which details are bogus. 5. Samantha Atso Party In October 2013, police in Dublin, Ireland crossed paths with a young woman who appeared to not know any English. Based on her limited communication skills, they surmised that she was a teenager who'd been trafficked. It was soon discovered that she was an Australian woman named Samantha Atso Party, that she spoke perfect English, and that she was in her mid-twenties. Authorities were divided on how to handle the case, with some officials believing that the young woman needed mental help and that she hadn't technically committed any crimes. Others, however, felt that she deliberately deceived authorities into thinking she was someone else. In the absence of a clear consensus, she was deported to Australia. The following year, Atso Party walked into a medical clinic in Calgary, Alberta, claiming that her name was Aurora Hepburn and that she'd been abducted and assaulted. By the time Canadian police discovered her real identity, they'd spent upwards of $150,000 investigating her false claims. Atso Party was sentenced to two months in jail and was deported back to Australia, where she continued along her path of deception by attempting to enroll in a public school under the name Harper Hart. She was caught lying once again and received a one-year prison sentence for dishonestly obtaining financial advantage by deception for the education, counseling, food, accommodation, and electronics she was given while posing as Harper. In 2019, Atso Party befriended a European couple who'd recently moved to Melbourne, claiming to be an 18-year-old woman named Saka. Then, using her false identity and credentials, she moved into their home as an au pair. But she blew her cover when she showed up at a mental health unit, claiming to be an abused teenager. The serial con artist pleaded guilty to multiple charges, including theft and property deception, and was sentenced to two years in prison. During Adzo Party's court proceedings, a forensic psychiatrist testified that she suffered from borderline personality disorder and Pseudologia Fantastica, which is better known as pathological lying. According to the expert witness, Atso Party's lying tendencies came from a desire to create a narrative of a happy childhood, rather than the one she actually experienced. Her history of making up stories dates at least as far back as 2007, when she allegedly claimed to be the American actress Dakota Johnson. Atso Party has allegedly created at least 70 false identities in various countries, and has racked up at least 100 criminal offenses. During her most recent trial in 2022, she pleaded guilty to falsely representing herself to police as a neglect victim. But nevertheless, she was released from prison at the urging of her lawyer, who argued for leniency due to the woman's mental health issues. Unfortunately, it's unclear what she's currently up to, but it likely won't be long before she's in the news again. 4. Mindy Jo Jones In 2020, Mindy Jo Jones obtained a $25,000 business loan and 
opened a gift shop in Harmony, Minnesota called Tin Rust and Harmony. She was just three years out of a prison sentence for stealing $100,000 from a couple when the store opened. And she soon opened a second location in Waucon, Iowa. But within two years, she fell behind on her business loan and had been reported by police by several vendors for allegedly writing thousands of dollars worth of bounced checks. During that same time period, Jones fell under suspicion for holding a raffle for a John Deere Gator utility vehicle at her store in Minnesota and failing to award the prize to a winner. She pleaded guilty to theft by swindle and was sentenced to five years of probation. In early 2022, the multi-unit building housing her Iowa store mysteriously caught fire and burned down, killing a dog who was trapped inside an apartment. Multiple fire departments responded to the call, and they used up the city's water supply trying to put out the blaze, which completely destroyed the building. By then, Jones was already facing charges for the phony raffle in Minnesota, which she pleaded guilty to. And she was also accused of 33 theft-related crimes, including two counts of theft by check, seven counts of theft by swindle, two counts of receiving stolen property, and 20 charges of check forgery. In one case, a man who Jones was living with claimed that she deposited $37,000 worth of checks meant for him into her bank accounts. Following the fire, she was charged with felony arson and animal abuse. She's scheduled to go on trial in October 2023. It's hard to know the true extent of Mindy's crimes, but the allegations against her date as far back as 2006 and include a previous fire that she was never charged for. 3. Sonia Egan 43-year-old Sonia Egan, a former social worker from Cork, Ireland, was already serving a two-year prison sentence for harassment when she was convicted of making horrific false allegations against nine people in 2023. According to prosecutors, Egan levied the phony claims over a five-year period as part of a cruel revenge campaign against people she suspected of being responsible for harassment complaints that had been made against her. In one bizarre case, Egan tried to convince a social worker that they were half-siblings. And when he didn't believe her, she told authorities that he'd pimped her out in a human trafficking scheme. She falsely accused several other men of attacking her, but none of her allegations have ever been backed by solid evidence. Her victims, which included social workers, a politician, and a senior police officer, accused Egan of ruining their lives and careers by accusing them of harming the very people they were tasked with protecting. She launched public smear campaigns against some of her targets on social media, where word spread like wildfire and people were quick to believe the claims. She even went as far as to write letters to their employers. The damage to the victims' reputations was irreparable, often giving them no choice but to start their lives over, even after being officially cleared of any wrongdoing. Egan pleaded guilty to eight counts of making false statements and six counts of making false reports for lies she told between 2016 and 2020. But her habit of telling tall tales dates back much further. According to the court, which heard that she had a documented history of making damaging false allegations against people starting in her teenage years. She's currently serving a four-year prison sentence for her latest batch of lies, but given her past, whether history will repeat itself remains to be seen. 2. Joseph McNamara Between 2014 and 2020, 50-year-old Joseph McNamara made a living through his illegal cannabis growing operation, which he housed at a rural compound in the English town of Crediton. During that same period, he managed to obtain a 415,000 pound or 504,000 US dollar mortgage and several luxury cars, despite having no legitimate income to speak of. He wound up getting arrested in 2020 after police raided his property and found 150 marijuana plants, along with professional growing equipment, including lights, sheeting to block out natural light, scales, and ventilation. 
The plants were in various stages of growth, and the equipment was old, but police nevertheless described it as a sophisticated growing operation. During his trial, McNamara argued that he only grew marijuana for personal use, claiming that he had a bad back. He insisted that he paid for his expensive cars using cash from his gambling profits that his father buried in the family's yard years earlier, which the judge described as nonsense. So in the end, McNamara was convicted of money laundering, fraud, and cultivating cannabis, and he received a sentence of four years and four months in prison as a result. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Elizabeth Jones British national Elizabeth Jones began falsely accusing men of attacking her as far back as 2004. Between 2005 and 2007, she made another eight false allegations. Police investigated and dismissed these claims, but authorities declined to charge Jones with any crimes at the time. Then, in 2009, she was hit with a 10-month jail sentence for falsely accusing yet another man of attacking her. The young woman's lies finally caught up with her in 2013, after she accused a new victim of assault, bringing her grand total of victims to 11. He adamantly denied attacking Jones throughout nine hours of questioning, and investigators eventually uncovered CCTV footage proving that the allegations were made up. Jones reportedly admitted to lying about the attack, and she said that she did it because she disliked the man she accused. She pleaded guilty to perverting the course of justice and was then sentenced to 16 months in prison. For her latest victim, it wasn't a harsh enough punishment to compensate for the suffering he endured after having his reputation smeared. It's reasonably safe to assume that he wasn't the sole individual disheartened by the outcome. Given the extent to which Jones's deceit eroded the fundamental principles of the justice system and the diligent efforts of law enforcement in its preservation. But it was better than nothing, and one can only hope that it was enough to prevent her from reoffending in the future. 7. Alan Miller McCarty In 2018, a defendant in a Daytona Beach courtroom interrupted and insulted the presiding judge, and it wasn't the first time either. Alan Miller McCarty watched the majority of his trial from behind one-way glass in a separate room after acting disrespectfully to the jury and judge. But regardless of his objections, he was found guilty of all the charges related to his threats aimed at another judge who presided in an earlier custody case involving Alan. It took a jury of three men and three women around 30 minutes to find Alan guilty of two counts of extortion or threats and two counts of corruption by threat against a public official. Alan didn't just threaten the judge, though. He also targeted a pair of dispatchers who were on the phone calls. Eventually, though, he was allowed back into the courtroom, and as the man's guilty verdicts were read, he stayed unusually quiet as he was surrounded by deputies. Alan was sentenced by Circuit Judge Mad Foxman to serve 20 years in prison, and he was given an additional 10 days for his inappropriate expletive-laced outbursts. Before he was moved behind one-way glass, everyone in the courtroom, including Judge Foxman, the jurors, and the attorneys, could all hear Alan's screams and offensive cursing. He was yelling about how he wasn't given the opportunity to present evidence, and he was upset that his papers were taken away from him. Alan also raised his voice at his attorney, who he believed wasn't asking enough questions. The man was originally in court in regard to his child custody case, and when Circuit Judge Stasia Warren ruled against him, he threatened to kill her. He also reportedly threatened the unborn child belonging to the prosecutor. The 36-year-old's behavior was so outrageous in court that his mother felt the need to apologize for her son's actions, according to the man's public defender, Ryan Bellinger. And State Attorney R.J. Lorenzer stated that the man's 20-year sentence will give him ample time to think about his violent threats against Judge Warren, as well as the entire judicial system. 6. Joseph Catarinu During a criminal fraud case in Houston, a defendant punched and attacked a bailiff, judge, and prosecutor after being denied bond at a court hearing in late 2021. 
58-year-old Joseph Katarinu was making a routine appearance in front of State District Judge Danny Lacayo when he was asked if he needed an attorney, according to what witnesses told the Houston Chronicle. When Joseph addressed the judge disrespectfully, Lacayo denied him bond, and he directed a bailiff to put him into custody. However, when the bailiff attempted to take him into custody, Joseph grabbed the bailiff's hair before taking her to the ground. Prosecutor Jacob Salinas reported that after he had the bailiff on the floor, he began punching her. Salinas said he was just wailing on her, so I tried to jump in. At this point, Judge Lakeo descended from the bench to help the prosecutor, and both men traded punches with Joseph. Salinas, a former college football lineman, and Lakeo were able to subdue the man after a brief struggle, and the bailiff managed to retrieve her stun gun that Joseph had knocked out of her hand. In self-defense, she shot Joseph with the stun gun, but it gave all three men a jolt of electricity. As a result, he was handed three felony charges for assault on a public servant. Back in 2018, the defendant was charged with submitting false financial statements that had worked for American Airlines as well as Envoy Air and claimed that the two companies owed him money. Court records show that Joseph's attorney asked the judge on December 13th to withdraw from the case because, in reality, his client did work for Envoy Air but had been fired in 2017 for his erratic behavior. Joseph also apparently declared himself a sovereign citizen who wasn't required to pay federal income tax. The so-called sovereign citizen movement has a rather extremist following that truly believes itself to be exempt from most state and federal laws. The movement has also been linked to violence. The case appears to be ongoing, as the last update was from December 2021 when Joseph attacked the bailiff in court. 5. Brian Earl Taylor There are many things that would be considered disrespectful in a court of law, and breaking out into song as you're being sentenced to prison is definitely one of them. But this was the exact decision that defendant Brian Earl Taylor made in a Michigan courtroom in early 2016. The felon went viral for his rendition of Adele's song, Sorry, as a video of him dedicating the performance to his victim began to circulate online. The man was 21 years old when he was put on trial for allegedly pressing a gun into an unarmed man's stomach while trying to steal his medical marijuana in 2015. He was charged and convicted of illegally carrying a concealed weapon as well as unlawful imprisonment. The judge sentenced him to serve three and a half years in prison, and as he did this, Brian sang the remorseful tune to everyone in the courtroom, which included the judge, the victim, and the victim's family. But that was years ago, and Brian, who's originally from Ypsilanti, Michigan, has since finished serving his time. After being released, he set out to prove to the world that he was a reformed man with a new song to sing. He's now staying out of trouble and posts videos of himself singing online, his first video being him belting out his own version of another Adele song called Hello. Brian planned to release an album in March 2020, but it appears as though he's only dropped one original song since getting out of prison. 4. Demetrius Lewis It's not every day that you hear about a defendant that's so immature that he chooses to hit on the judge appointed to his case. But Demetrius Lewis from Fort Lauderdale is a unique individual. And in early 2021, he confessed his undying love for Judge Tabitha Blackman while attending his bail hearing remotely due to COVID-19 restrictions. The Florida man turned on the charm with the attractive judge only to fall flat on his face. Lewis appeared before Judge Blackman, and apparently he was determined to shoot his shot with her. He attempted to butter her up by opening with, Judge, you so gorgeous. I just had to tell you, I love you, I love you. He poured on the charm pretty thick, and he actually managed to get a smile out of the judge, who seemed oddly receptive to his advances. But just seconds later, she made it entirely clear to the defendant that his behavior would not be tolerated in a court of law. He was subsequently charged with ecstasy possession and attempted burglary, as Judge Blackman let him know that she had found probable cause for the charges. A prosecutor then asks for the man's bail to be set at $7,500, and he makes note that three children were present at the home Lewis allegedly attempted to break into. The defendant had just been released from prison in 2019 after serving four years for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon in Orange County. 
and less than three years later, he was before a judge once again for crimes he committed. At the end of the bail hearing, the judge ordered Lewis to be held on a $5,000 bail, which was $2,500 less than the DA's request. 3. Donna Kosal In this case specifically, it's not about the defendant, it's about her mother, Donna Kosal. In Detroit, Michigan, the woman was sentenced to 93 days in jail after she was caught laughing in court during a family's victim statement during her daughter's DUI sentencing in March 2017. While her 25-year-old daughter Amanda was waiting for her sentencing for killing a man named Jerome Zerka, a father of five, Donna Kosa was jailed for contempt of court following her shocking outburst. The woman was initially thrown out of the courtroom along with her unnamed boyfriend when the sister of her daughter's victim took the stand and began to read a statement on behalf of Zerka's children. A video from inside the courtroom showed Judge Kiana Lillon losing her patience with the woman's boyfriend and then with Donna herself after catching the two of them smirking. Then, without hesitation, the judge sentenced Donna to serve 93 days in jail for contempt of court. Lillard also slammed the couple for being extremely disrespectful to the victim and his family, even going as far as to call the woman's boyfriend a clown. After ordering the pair out of the courtroom, Lillard addressed the rest of the court and said, anybody else want to go, as she was clearly sick of dealing with the discourtesy. Amanda Kosal ended up pleading guilty to killing Zerka and severely injuring the man's fiancée Brittany Johnson. She was handed 3 to 15 years behind bars as a result. As for Donna Kosal, she returned in front of the judge to tearfully apologize for her behavior. She told Lillard, I deeply apologize for what I did. I was under a lot of stress. The remorse for her actions swayed the judge, and instead of serving 93 days in jail, her sentence was reduced to just one day, which she'd already served. 2. Leonard Grazer In late 2019, a Russian man who was on trial for murdering his sister was filmed trying to escape the courtroom through the ceiling. The defendant, 18-year-old Leonard Grazer, was put inside a glass-walled box while the trial played out, and he saw an opportunity to make his getaway through a grill that was on top of the box. According to Life, a Russian news channel, at least three officers were present in the courtroom watching Leonard, and all of them sprang into action when they noticed the criminal attempting to squeeze through the grill and push the panels of the ceiling into the cruel space above it. Two of the officers climbed up the box to grab Leonard, while the other one hits the defendant on the side with the baton. At this moment, the ceiling panels start to crash down as the officers manage to grab Leonard by the legs and his body flails around inside the crawl space. One of the policemen continues to hold onto Leonard's legs while the others jump from the box to get more help. The criminal almost gets away when he somehow shimmies out of his pants and frees one of his legs. However, the officer holding onto him kept a tight grip on the other leg and he holds him until help arrives. After a while, the defendant agreed to climb back into the glass wall box to continue his trial, but he was handcuffed to prevent any further outbursts, according to reports from the Moscow Times. He was accused of murdering his 21-year-old sister, Ariada Coral, which he claimed was a sacrificial killing in order to rid himself of Satan. Leonard shared an apartment with his sister and even said he had a perfect relationship with his sibling. But when questioned by authorities about the murder, he said, I did what I had to do. Ariada's body was found with several stab wounds at their apartment, and Lennon was discovered at the scene as well, praying in the nude with demonic symbols written in his sister's blood on his head. In September 2020, Lennon was sentenced to compulsory psychiatric medical treatment by Moscow's Sherbinsky's District Court, but in accordance with Russian law, the verdict and any other details regarding the case haven't been disclosed. 1. Penelope Soto A woman from South Florida cast out a judge before waving her middle finger at him during a virtual hearing in 2013. 18-year-old Penelope Soto landed herself 30 days in jail for contempt of court, and the whole story gained national attention as a video of the incident went viral online. Penelope flipped off Miami-Dade Circuit Judge Jorge Rodriguez Jomat when she appeared before him for a Xanax possession charge. 
At this hearing, Penelope stroked her hair and laughed as Rodriguez Chomat asked the young woman about the cost of her jewelry and her other assets in order to set her bond amount appropriately. Her action seemed to irritate the judge who told her, it's not a joke, you know, be serious about it. Penelope responded by telling the judge that he'd made her laugh and said she would be serious from then on out. But then she responded to his question about how much her jewelry was worth by saying it's a lot of money, refusing to give Rodriguez Chomat a real dollar amount. This seemed to upset the judge even more, and he in turn set Penelope's bond at $5,000 before saying bye-bye to her. Soto laughed at this and replied by saying adios as she walked out of the camera's view. Feeling like he was being disrespected and mocked, Judge Rodriguez Chomat summoned Penelope back and shocked the woman by raising her bond to $10,000 instead of $5,000. This enraged the 18-year-old, and when she understood that the judge was being serious, she started to walk away. But before she did so, she cursed out the judge by saying F you and flashed him her middle finger. As a result, she was called back once again and was given a 30-day contempt sentence for her unruly behavior. However, the following Friday, Penelope appeared in front of Judge Rodriguez Chomat to apologize for her actions. She told him that she doesn't normally act disrespectfully as she did before and that she was truly sorry for what she'd done. She also confessed to having two Xanax pills before she was arrested, which could have contributed to the way she acted. This apology seemed to have an effect on the judge, who then did away with the young woman's $10,000 bond and enabled her to be released directly from the courtroom. This just goes to show that sometimes saying sorry can go a long way. Would you rather find out that a close friend lied to you about three or four major things, like having a serious illness and suffering through trauma, or that they lied to you about dozens of trivial and inconsequential things? like their favorite food and with no clear purpose. Would you be able to forgive the person in either scenario? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.